Invitations can change your life. How you respond to an invitation can change the course of your life. Welcome to Heart Talk with me, Dr. Charles Lee. A heart surgeon by profession and a philanthropist by nature, Dr. Gokhale and his whole team of surgeons, nurses, sisters are here on this road of recovery for those of us who've had heart bypass. It is my pleasure and my honor to welcome Dr. Gokhale. Dr. Gokhale, welcome to Heart Talk. Thank you, sir. Nice meeting you. How did you end up with the doctor? First of all, you never had chest pain? No, because what happened was I had high blood pressure huh. and, uh, and I was putting on weight. So they changed my blood pressure drugs and I was operating and I didn't like the side effects of this Novas. And, uh, and I was going to go to England with my two sons. And I said, listen, thank God I'm a doctor. Yeah. I think it was a layman. Today, there will be no interview. Yeah. Sure. And I said, I want to see my heart. Yeah. And the cardiologist said, look, Charles, we have tried everything. We better have an angiogram. And that's how, okay. when I looked at the report, I was numb. Shocking, shocking, shocking. What on earth is this? You know? And I guess it's, you know, it, it, it was uh, God's intervention in my life. I think so. I think so. But, but tell me, sir, if yeah. that report came to you, yeah. um, what, what would you tell me as a patient? Yeah. I would tell you, look at this Dr. Charles. You have got many blocks in the heart. How old are you now? 60. I've just 60. 60. 60. As I said, even doctors do not know that they have to go for regular checkups one after 40 years. Right. You see, see this? You see, we keep telling so many to the patients, even we others do not know about it. So you already missed the boat a little bit, but it's good that you found it now. You got multiple blocks in the blood vessels. But that means you got a quite extensive disease. That is a negative side. But the positive side here is, see, your heart is working very well. See, one of the most important things for people to live longer is the, how is the heart function. If you had a major heart attack, heart function from 60% has come down to say 25-30%, they will not live as long as the people with a good heart function. With the, you, so you have a good heart function, 65% so uh, fortunately heart is not damaged and you got multiple blocks which are found in time so you need to go through bypass surgery for this thing so that you can stay healthy for the next few decades provided you take care of yourself and do not look at other options many people think that people like this multiple blocks we can try medical management we want to avoid surgery we want to go for angioplasty we want to try alternative medicines right there are many alternative treatments that are available in other specialties. But remember, the treatment of coronary artery disease has been very scientific. Thousands of papers have been published on, on coronary artery disease. It is one of the very few topics that have underwent extensive studies in the whole of medicine. So with all this scientific background, don't go for alternative medicine, which may work, but which do not have enough scientific data. If you want to try on myself, if I want to try on myself, I want to take the proven treatment, not some experimental. I go for experimental when proven treatments are not possible for me. So for you, surgery is the best option. And we will try to take a mammary artery from here. It's yes, called it intrathoracic yes, artery. It Put it to the vessel on the front. And when you have, suppose people have two blocks or three blocks and non-diabetic, we can try both internal mammary artery. But someone who is a diabetic, who is obese, who has got so many blocks, it is very difficult to revascularize with all arteries. So we generally use one artery and the remaining we take a vein from the leg and put it there. And the artery will work for a long time. The 10 year working of this artery, which I said internal memory, is about 98 to 99 percent. That means in 100 people at the end of 10 years, this artery is still open, doing very well. Whereas the veins, they have about 10, 20 percent failure by the end of 10 years, provided you take good precaution, they can stay open for long. For about 10 years back, for example, these veins were closing very fast. Those days, people were not taking precautions. They were not controlling diet. They were not doing exercise. They were not watching their blood pressure, diabetes. But a lot of education went on into this. Now people are very careful about their health. So that's why these vein grafts, in the end of 15 years, 20 years, they are working very well. Right. So that's why, for you, you have to go through the surgery. It's a traumatic, no doubt about it. But afterwards, you take all the precautions which you have been talking about. And then go for, don't forget that you have to go for checkups once in a year after this. In between, you may go for medical management. 
make sure your blood pressure is under control. These days for blood pressure and diabetes, it's very easy to control at home. Because you've got those small equipment, automated things, which you can check and adjust. And once you do that, every year, you need to check your lipid profile, you have to check your uh, treadmill, ECG, treadmill test, and do a echocardiogram to see how the heart function. Many a time, people with the diabetes, they think our sugar is under control with the medicines, so we should have the medicine. That is what they tell me. Yeah. Your sugar is under control because you have taken because medicines. Taking your graphs are working because you have taken medicines. But you never know, still it is inbuilt in the nature that the blocks will slowly progress. Today we have some pro treatments to bypass the blocks to open them up. But in the recent past, some drugs like statins have come which have shown to cause a regression of the lesions to some extent. In future, some more drugs will come, which will cause a regression. But until then, you have to take all these precautions. When you do a CT angiogram, for example, because I'm told that you have a lot of dye and you have to find out where the uh, openings are for the crafts and you're exposing yourself. When should I do it? Two years? Five years? Because my surgeon tells me, wait till you have a clinical sign. Exactly, I tell you. See, <clears throat> Remember, blocks do not mean that you develop a heart attack. Blocks doesn't mean that you... You take about a 70 years person, 100 people do angiogram, 90% of them have blocks, 20%, 30%, 60%. It's an aging process. It's an aging process. The deposits will happen from the age of 2 years, 3 years. They will progress. But the progress should be slow. So when you do a CT angiogram, it shows you blocks in all the small blood vessels, 1 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter, those things may show. It doesn't mean anything. We cannot do it. They are the medical problem. We already know that you have a problem. The major blood vessels, as you said, the three blood vessels on the front, they are about 2, 2.53, and they feed all the small vessels. If there are blocks there, we can do something. For the small vessels, the drugs we are taking is enough. So when you do a CT scan, you find some blocks, you start getting worried. But you, we can't do anything. Why getting into trouble when you cannot do anything? So that's why I said every year you should go through a treadmill. Now for example, first time you do a treadmill, it's normal. And after three years the treadmill is positive, that means the disease has progressed. That is when I will put you through a CT angiogram. The symptoms are the treadmill and the echo shows that disease is advanced. Then I put you. Otherwise, don't bother getting it done. And you asked one question some time back, someone who are normal, See, going for an angiogram, always people get worried, I have to get to the hospital and then all these inpatient. The hospital is always a hospital, people don't like to go there. But a CT angiogram is a simple test, you go like a scan, they do less than a minute to do the test. You just go there from office, get it done and go back home to the office to do your work after one hour. But so people think that if you do CT angiogram, I can find out disease very early. But again, don't go that far. People who have got multiple risk factors, obesity, right. hypertension, family hypertension, history. diabetes, right. family history, high cholesterol. Some, there are some risk factors, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, hypertension, these are all major risk factors. Obesity, start of, if you have at least two of these things, then you should go for these things yearly even though you don't have symptoms. Get it properly checked out. Get it checked out. But if you have one risk factor, you do not have symptoms, you just try to control it. You don't have to go through that. You just go through a treadmill, those things are enough. Okay. So CT angiogram has got a lot of irradiation. Once you go through a CT angiogram, better not go through another CT for the next three, four years. It gives right. you so much irradiation. Right. So, so, better so, you... so better wait either in develop a symptoms or one of these basic tests, simple non-invasive tests we call them. Treadmill test, ECO, ECG, those things show that previously they were okay, now there is some deviation. Then you go for these things. Very good, sir. Okay, excellent. Now, coming to a heart bypass surgery, I've had my bypass, and the night before surgery was the most difficult for me right. because I wrote four letters to my family and addressed them to one to my wife, Monica, to my two, three children, Jeremy, David, Sarah, wrote a letter, and the morning of the surgery, I gave them each this letter because I'm not a heart surgeon. But they think I'm going for an appendicectomy. See, they don't know the seriousness of it. It's not, tell me, sir, having done thousands and thousands of open heart surgery. What is the risk for those who are listening in of heart bypass surgery? What is the risk factor in the surgery itself? Oh, yeah. See, <clears throat> there's nothing in life is 100% safe. 
Everywhere we walk on the road, we are taking a risk. Sometimes we cross busy roads. In fact, we have taken much more risk than most of the surgical procedures. So if someone tells you that, okay, you are going to go through surgery, you are going to be 100% safe. I have done 10,000. But if, if I tell someone that, you are going to be 100% safe. I know of surgeons. But first thing is don't trust them. They are not telling you the truth. Every procedure is associated with some risk. But then we have to balance. With the medical management, the risk is there 50%. With surgery, the risk is 2%, which will you choose? I will choose the surgeon. But having said that, the moment you say surgery, it is very stressful to the family and to the patient. But then, this is the best we can do to save the people. If everything is fine, people do not have, they are not less than say 70, 75 years of age, mm -hmm. and they are not very obese, and then the other organs are working alright, kidney, brain, lungs, everything is working alright, and the heart function is good, the risk is less than 2%. That means 98% of the people have to go through the physical, psychological trauma, but they will come out, do well, take care of their family, take care of their life, enjoy this one. But two out of, which one out of those 100, we cannot tell. But there may be a reaction to the drug, and the bypass grafts may block, they may have bleeding tendency, and anything can, they may have a paralytic stroke. Two out of 100 can have complications that we have to make sure that the patient and attendants understand. The special attendance understanding is very important because patients, if they are fine, they don't question. If they are not fine, they don't question. But the attendants have to understand. And I always tell the people that when someone advises you to go through a bypass surgery and angioplasty, just don't do that. You know the surgeon, you know the doctor very well. But take a second opinion. Always take a second opinion because there are some borderline cases where Medical treatment may be give equally good results, but the experienced person may be able to tell you that. Whereas someone who, who is young, with a lot of knowledge, a lot of enthusiasm, may overdo things. That's why I always tell my patients, I think you should go through surgery, that's my feeling. But you always have a right to take a second opinion, take an angiogram CD, go to another doctor, maybe one of his patients suggests, or you heard about him, someone who has been there for a long time, in the place and practicing, take one more opinion. And only you get convinced before you jump. But that is very, very important. I have a scar. Yeah. And you know, they, we used to have this cowboy program those, those days when I jump <laughs> on, have gun will travel. <laughs> so now I've got this, I have scar will travel. You know, yeah. I, go. <laughs> I still get pain. One and a half years, two years ago. And, and I go into the internet and they're all saying, oh, it's just two months. Doctors yeah. say six yeah. weeks, you can do what you want to do. And when I cough and sneeze, I get this pain and my children think I'm putting on him. Yeah. Daddy, it's already one and a half years. And I say, no. Yeah. Now tell me this surgical scar. Yeah. I mean, is this pain for the rest of my life or is it a... That's a very, very important question you ask, Charles. Because see, this is the reason why we keep talking about minimal access in these days. See, the first open heart surgery really started in 1953. It's a relatively recent. It's not like a plastic surgery, you know. It is there before crash. It's right. probably one of the first things, skin grafting was the probably the first surgical maneuver that was done in the history. Right. That was the actual first transplant that was done too. Yeah. But you know, the surgeries, millions of people have survived. But remember, we cut a bow and we, we stitch the skin. And once you do that, especially the skin here, you know very well that it is more prone for keloid. Yes, here I, have it, I have it, yes. Yeah, here as well as there. Yeah. And people come to me after years, Dr. Gokhale, see, you saved my life, but I'm suffering this problem. I can only say I'm sorry, this is the best I can do at this stage. Because all the heart operations are going through this till now. So about 10% of the people develop hypertrophy of the scar, kill eye, and did complaining about a year, two or three. Yeah, as you said, like your children, all the attendants think that, oh no, you are able to go to your movie, you are driving, you are doing everything. Right. Your but then when it comes to suddenly you say you have this come. Yes. Some people have learned because this healing, this mechanism is totally unknown. Some people do, unfortunately, I cannot help, I can only assure them that your heart is fine, but they are having a real problem. That's why these days we are able to take this one more step forward, do what is minimal access surgery. Because any scar on the side of the chest heals much better. Yes, yes. And it doesn't produce keli. And these days for some people who are able to do this bypass surgery through a small incision below the nipple, 
through the intercostal space without cutting the ribs, without yes, cutting the breastbone. Yes, yes. And these people, they are so happy. You should see some of them, they come back. Yes. You see, that when I'm going for walking, people ask me, I underwent the surgery. We show me the scar, I have a lot of problems. When I show the scar here, they say that, no, no, I don't think that go clear to bypass surgery for you. <laughs> Just go get verified. Because it gives them so much satisfaction sure. that they don't have this problem. See, you know, science is advancing, is advancing, it? advancing. Very As you go along, I'm sure in the future, some people can get that through a porch. I keep telling the same thing to all my colleagues. Yeah, that 20, 30 years, 40 years from now, suppose 30 years, and if God permits I'm alive, my grandchildren come and say, when one of my patients comes and says, you know your grandpa did my surgery, look at this. He did my bypass and say, I'm alive. Then they would come and say, oh, grandpa, are you a butcher or a doctor? You made such a big scar on his body, you cut to do his surgery? Because by the time, all this will be controlled by medicines. And I'm sure some of the sure. minimal access things will come, like through a thoracoscope, robotic, you do the surgery, yes. send the person home in uh, two, three days' time, mm -hmm. they go back to the work in about one week, ten days' time, with a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. taking all the precautions. That is what we are going through. So we should never give up. We have a diabetes, well, we, what can, we have to live with it. But if we manage diabetes, we can live like other people, you enjoy the life. We have bypass surgery, not to worry. Already what happened, it happened. But you can take the precautions so that your heart continues to be healthy. But you have to work hard with other people because we miss the boat in the initial phase. But you take the precautions, do everything. People say that don't hit that, don't hit that. It is true. There is only a guideline. So many patients ask me, Dr. Gokhara, I like mutton. I like mutton biryani. They say, no, no, don't hit it. Stop it. Eat vegetarian. Then what's the point in living for 30 years if I don't eat what I like? It is true. Let me shake your hand there. <laughs> it is true. It you, is, eat. This is, uh, you eat, but cut, yeah. but cut down. But cut down. Previously, I've been eating mutton every day. Make it twice a week. Enjoy your limitations. Because we are not meant to live in this world. I mean, not doing what we like. You are professionally stressful, but you still enjoy it. So maybe you do modifications so that you still enjoy the work part time and probably take less stressful thing at the rest of the time. But do what you enjoy. You are meant here to enjoy this world. Amen, amen. I, I want to just now slowly end by something that I've, I've noted, which happened to me, which is a surprising sign of an unhealthy heart. You know, some say that uh, you can have neck pain or systems pain or whatever. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah. I had that about two years before I was diagnosed as having uh, advanced heart disease. Um, so tell me, how does that affect, does it also affect the blood, like you said, it affects blood vessels everywhere. Because it really affected me and I didn't know what was the cause. But now I know that I warn people, in fact my own urologist, I say, listen, anybody coming in with erectile dysfunction in more than 50 years, get the guy checked out. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, it is true. See, there may be telltale signs like this erectile dysfunction, someone having a little toothache without a tooth problem. See, people have talked about these things. But you know, for a cough, there are 1000 reasons for cough. Erectile dysfunctions, there are about 110 reasons for erectile dysfunction. So anyone, that's why I said, anyone past 40 years of age, even if you are, everything is fine, get your checkups done. Don't imagine yourself that you are fine. That's important. And finally, sir, the first book I bought after my heart surgery, I was in Kuala Lumpur and I went to the bookstore, was this book by Dr. Ornish, where he talks about yeah. reversing heart disease. And I, as a surgeon, I mean, they come to see me for beauty and cosmetic surgery, and they tell me, can you reverse this aging? I say, nonsense. I can delay it. There are certain procedures that we can do to try and, you know, uh, prolong it. But no way I can reverse it. Now tell me honestly, as a heart surgeon, is there anything as reversing heart disease? The blocks in the blood vessels, you see, you have to understand the meaning behind it. When you are saying a reversing here, a block that is 70% is becoming 50%. Okay. Not the total disappearing, or that it becomes like a beautiful blood vessel of a 3 year old child. It's not like that. What we are seeing are shadows. No one can go actually inside and see. We are underestimating a lot of disease. Suppose, even sometimes you see angiograms. People come with the angiogram for surgery. But I have a little doubt. 
When I repeat an angiogram, we found it is only 30%, not 70%. Because it depends upon which view you have taken right. and how much focusing has been done. There are a lot of man-made errors can happen estimating these things. These are all visual, not really technical most of the time. But having said that, I strongly believe that this is possible in blocks and arteries because, you know, what is that that is producing blocks here? Most of the time, it is the fat deposits that are happening at that place. And what happens whenever there is a fat trauma to the blood vessel, fat deposits. Yes. The next thing is scarring, fibrosis. If fat deposit, if there is a lot of soft fat there, it can look like 80%. If there is some way you can get it replaced with a hard fat, you can make it undergo fibrosis, then what 80% can become 50%. 50% is perfectly fine. You see, the nature, God has given us so much of a reserve. If 50% block, I'm not worried. 60% I'm not worried. But if it becomes 80, 90%, the reserve is coming down. So what we are doing is not totally reversing, we are increasing the reserve. Okay. So it is possible, like the like example I said, statics. This is meditation. The stress. Whenever you put the stress, a lot of catacombs are released. Vessels are reverse spasm. What is 50% before when it undergoes blood vessel narrow, it becomes a 90%. Right, right. So all these things, stress, the stress factors. factors, and then there are, for example, the drugs that have come, all these things can be yes. And second thing is when you do some exercise, as you said sometime back, people develop collaterals. Yes. Myself, you know, over the years. You know, see what happens when there is a soft block there, it can suddenly rupture. It may be 30% block, but it can produce heart attacks. So do you know many of the heart attacks are produced not by 80% blood, but by 20-30% blocks? The soft fat, when the blood pressure is hitting it like that, suddenly it, it, it ruptures, then clot forms. And when we give streptokin and other drugs, then we angiogram, there is no block there. Why? Because the fat ruptured and produced the thrombosis. So suppose you can have a mechanism wherein the fat becomes fibrous rarely, and only hard fats are deposited, things like that, then probably we could do the reversal, which I think is possible. Right. We are increasing the reserve. We are not totally making it normal, but what we need to have is, a 80 year old person already has say about 60% block, but how much work is he going to do? He is not going to job. He can, we can keep him alive, do well, enjoy, go to a movie, spend time with the grandchildren mm -hmm. and probably go to a golf for a little while and just walking a little bit around. That blood supply is enough for him. So that's how so, we look at things. Yes, the heart diseases can be prevented. Yes, it is possible to reverse it. I'm sure I'm looking forward for the future. There are a few publications saying that these statins have reversed the disease. Sometimes it can be the angiogram may not be right, it may show less, it may not be actually reversed in that particular case, but it is possible and with that hope I think we should leave, work hard, do what you want to do. So with that, yeah. I want to say thank you Dr. Allah Gopal Krishna Gokhale for doing hot talk with us. Thank Thanks. you sir. Thank you very much, it's my pleasure and I hope many people will get benefited yes. I mean, uh, leaving all the misconceptions about these problems. Thank you sir. My precious. Good luck. Enjoy your limitations. Because we are not meant to live in this world. I mean, not doing what we like. Your profession is stressful, but you still enjoy it. So maybe you do modifications so that you still enjoy the work part time and probably take less stressful thing and rest of the time. But do what you enjoy. We are meant here to enjoy this world. Thank <laughs> you.